Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So with this uh, in mind, we can now actually now go, go in a with this recapitulation of this this uh, uh, with this recollection, we can actually just go into this uh, one-dimensional unchambered flame of this coupling function formulation. So then, uh, this is the problem derivation as a problem definition as we have seen that on the left hand it is a one-dimensional flame okay, uh, and on the uh, x-axis we plot distance and on the y-axis we plot both the fuel mass fraction as well as temperature. Of course, these are different axes uh, if properly axis properly has to be chosen mm, and then on the left hand side uh, you have the fuel region, but it is not pure fuel on the right hand side you have the oxidizer region, but it is not pure oxidizer. So, then the mass fraction of this thing essentially becomes uh, uh, this is the mass fraction on the left hand side uh, which is uh, which is given by y f 0 and this is the mass fraction on the right hand side uh, for the uh, mass fraction of fuel on the right left hand side which is given by y f 0 and uh, this is the mass fraction of oxidizer on the right hand side which is given by y o l. Mm, and then um, uh, of course, uh, then I can uh, define the boundary conditions that at x equal to 0 your y f is essentially is equal to y f 0 and your y 0 is equal to 0. Uh, because this is uh, this is the uh, boundary that is at at x equal to zero that is on the left hand side your y f is equal to nothing but y f zero on the right hand side uh, on uh, but on the left hand side uh, on this boundary they have no oxidizer because the entire oxidizer has been consumed any time after any point beyond x f your oxidizer has been consumed so on the left hand side your your oxidizer is equal to zero your product oxidizer is equal to also zero and your temperature on the left hand boundary is equal to t zero. Okay. So, on the right hand side uh, similarly you have uh, y f is equal to 0 because the entire fuel has been consumed after the reaction sheet and but your y uh, uh, oxidizer is nothing but uh, y 0 uh, L uh, that is um, once again this is not equal to 1 because there can be some nitrogen mixed with the it can be air where you have often nitrogen mixed with the oxidizer we are talking in very general. So, on the left and also your product is equal to 0 and your T is essentially equal to T L on the right hand side. All right. So, with this uh, we can do a coupling function for formulation of course, you see that there is no flow. So, we do not even have to invoke the assumption that your convection is less important than uh, diffusion, but on the straight away it is on also of course, it is a steady uh, flame. So, um, essentially your your uh, your uh, um, uh, uh, stay, um, unsteady term the time the, the dou dou t term goes away your uh, dou dou your the divergence of rho u uh, y i or rho u h s uh, this type of, type of terms go away and you are essentially left with a balance of diffusion and reaction and uh, then of course, we can do this uh, what we just did in this this thing and we arrive at uh, this coupling function uh, formulation for apply immediately we can apply this formulation in this um, in this case and we have this uh, yeah, Laplacian is also now uh, resolved into is, is simplified into just a one dimensional uh, dou 2 b i and dou x squared is equal to 0 and your uh, beta i essentially now can be straight away solved into uh, in two integrations as, uh, as a linear function of x. So, beta i is, is nothing but c 1 i uh, is a constant and c 2 i, but of course, beta i can be like there can be different i's uh, for fuel there can be because your beta i is nothing but beta i is beta i is nothing but your t tilde plus y i tilde. Oh, by the way, we also assume that the Lewis number is equal to 1 here. So, we is, uh, this denominator of y i tilde goes away. So, we is essentially t tilde plus y i tilde. Now, then for beta, we can have a beta f is equal to t tilde plus y f tilde. We can have a beta o as uh, that is this is for the fuel, this is for the oxidizer. We can have a t tilde plus y o tilde. Okay. So, there can be two betas essentially and uh, then uh, of course, uh, 
uh, we have to use that because we want to invoke these boundary conditions. Mm, so, um, this coupling function formulation uh, what we have here uh, we can uh, this is essentially contains the information about the temperature uh, within the system it also contains inf information about the mass fraction within the system uh, mass fraction within this um, within this domain and uh, we can now what we do to move further we need to basically apply the boundary conditions here okay um, and uh, we need to apply these boundary conditions to obtain this constants. So, applying this boundary conditions what we get is essentially that we get uh, that uh, beta f is uh, essentially t tilde plus uh, y f tilde okay and uh, y f uh, tilde that is uh, that is our beta we assume that the beta 1 is equal to essentially beta fuel and that is given by t tilde plus y f tilde and then if we apply this sort of things uh, in here we get this and uh, we get y f tilde 0 plus t 0 tilde plus t l tilde minus t 0 tilde minus y f 0 x tilde. Of course, it has to be linear in x. Similarly, with applying this we get this boundary condition. So, you should do this simple uh, this on your own and this will give you the confidence to specifically solve for any kind of flames later. So, this is what we have arrived and you see that this result is in general. Okay, we have not limited to a reaction sheet y because uh, I mean we have not invoked any assumptions about the how large the chemist uh, reaction rate is uh, in comparison to diffusion etc. Okay, now we will come where the reaction sheet approximations will be incorporated. So, uh, this is where we apply the reaction sheet approximation that is we assume that uh, that is uh, if this was our flame this is the left boundary y f 0 this is our right boundary where you have y o l and this is our our uh, t 0 this, uh, this is t and this is our t uh, l and uh, so this is we assume that this y f goes to 0 at the flame location ok this is 0 similarly we say that y 0 l y 0 goes to y o goes to 0 at the flame location. So, in this region there is no fuel and in this region there is no oxidizer. So, this is only possible when the reaction sheet of assumption is, is, is incorporated that is when we say that the that the reaction uh, rates are much 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 infinitely faster in compared to diffusion. So, that there is no reactant leakage and as a result of that uh, your these things are 0. So, as the to put it in formally we say that y f tilde is equal to 0 between x f tilde uh, by when x lies between x f tilde and x, x uh, and 1. So, of course, we can non dimensionalize x as is equal to x by L. Um, okay. So, um, so x reaches x tilde reaches 1 when x when x equal to L uh, and of course, in this region since oxidizer is equal to 0 your mass fraction of the oxidizer um, is equal to 0 when uh, between 0 and uh, uh, x uh, when x is between 0 and x f tilde all right. So, now then we can apply all these equations and get the basically the um, we can apply this we can do uh, this using this. Um, uh, this and this we can essentially obtain the temperature uh, because uh, your y's get uh, eliminated in this right sides and then we obtain the temperature on this uh, two sides as uh, this and this that is uh, the temperature in this side is given by this this uh, equation and the temperature on this side is given by temperature this equation but the most important thing to note is that the temperature is linear in x t tilde is linear in x tilde okay now that is why the the con where does this come from this comes from the fact that this is a this is a essentially a, a, a uh, diffusion problem. So, uh, and uh, is essentially we are solving for the Laplace equation and uh, applying proper boundary conditions we essentially find that the beta i is essentially linear in x that is where it comes from because um, you know, the solution of uh, Laplace equation when you have uh, boundary conditions like this it gives you linear solutions ok. So, uh, then uh, of course, we can also when we incorporate this temperature equation back into the beta i equation, we also get uh, 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 equations for this y f tilde and y 0 tilde 
and those are also given by linear in x and this is essentially the profile we get that this decreases like this whereas the y is 0 decreases like this and the temperature increases like this and decreases like this. So, but is what is one point is clear here that this this the in the whole domain the maximum temperature point is the T is equal at T equal to x f tilde. So, uh, this is the point where the temperature is maximum and uh, but then that is completely solves the problem. So, you see how straightforward it is that just by uh, this uh, whole coupling function this this problem contain all the complexities right. It contain the reaction rate etcetera, but we just uh, uh, convert or remove those things by just uh, considering the, the, the fact that uh, your mm, uh, your uh, coupling function formulations and by because as a consequence of Lewis number equal to 1 and uh, using that we just uh, solve this whole thing in just one step ok by by, uh, by forming a Laplace equation out of this complicated uh, con re diffusive reactive equations ok. So, that is the strength of coupling function formulations yes it uh, requires some time to uh, properly normalize them properly stoichiometric weight, weight them etcetera. But once those things those those uh, parts are done it we can just get the solution in one step and that is the power of normalization also. So, this is strongly encouraged that you solve these things in a in this kind of a uh, in this uh, in this manner instead of uh, going through the full dimensional form or going through the full um, uh, uh, diffusive reactive equations. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, what uh, what needs to be noted is that that uh, if we set uh, that y f tilde is equal to 0 and uh, or y tilde equal to 0 then we can using these two things we can find out uh, what is the location of the flame that is what is x f tilde. So, uh, that gives you basically x f tilde and we find that the x f tilde is just nothing but this y f 0 tilde divided by y f 0 tilde plus 1 y 0 l tilde. Now, this is equal to 1. So, this becomes essentially 1 by 1 plus y u l tilde and which is essentially given by the uh, phi star that is a equivalence ratio uh, normalized equivalence ratio is a uh, equivalence ratio star divided by 1 plus phi star and which is essentially the normalized equivalence ratio. So, essentially the flame is stabilized at uh, the normalized uh, the x by l uh, x by l uh, x f by l is essentially phi star which is it is the normalized equivalence ratio of the fuel air mixture that we have ok. So, that is the thing uh, and we can also find out uh, by because we know the gradients we can also find out what is the fuel mask fuel consumption rate and that is given by this thing that is minus lambda by C p uh, is equal to d y f d f. If you are surprised this essentially what we have done is that we have just replaced the rho d uh, d y by d f with lambda by C p because our assumption Lewis number is equal to 1. So, that is why we can do this uh, switching between rho d and lambda by C p all right. So, uh, that is what we have obtained and uh, then we can also show what is the criteria of mass maximum burning when y f 0 is obvious is that one y f 0 is equal to and y f 0 is equal to 1 where that is when you have pure fuel and pure oxidizer then you have maximum uh, burning. And the final thing is that uh, how to obtain the uh, flame uh, sheet temperature now since we know the x f star location we can substitute this in the in the temperature um, uh, in the in the temperature uh, equation and uh, what we get is essentially this uh, form. Uh, that is if we substitute this x f tilde in either uh, this two uh, this uh, this one that you have trained uh, as in either uh, this this these two equations um, uh, 5 or 6 which was the temperature equations uh, uh, we could easily get uh, recover the temperature that is uh, this was the x f tilde equation that we have got and then what we can get is that uh, we will get uh, this this equation that is uh, T Actually, I'll uh, just write in the next sheet. This is uh, that is, if you uh, this needs some discussion that how to get the temperature substitute in um, temperature equations we get T f tilde minus T 0 tilde that is what I want to say is that if you substitute this thing ok 
in these equations that is in the temperature equations where you see that T minus this is this is in this part T minus is essentially T 0 tilde plus T L tilde minus T 0 tilde plus Y O L tilde times X tilde that is if you instead of X tilde if you substitute X F here ok. X F is a function of what 1 by 1 plus Y O L tilde similarly that in this thing if you substitute X F here ok which and then the similar things and then if you substitute uh, the other values of this Y F Y 0 etcetera what you will get finally is this form that is T F minus T 0 tilde divided by y f 0 tilde plus t f tilde minus t 0 tilde divided by y 0 l tilde is equal to 1 all right. Now, what are all these things? Now, y f tilde is equal to y f divided by y f 0 ok. Similarly, y 0 tilde is equal to y 0 divided by sigma 0 y f 0 ok and uh, q c is, is equal to summation y is equal to 1 2. So, and uh, essentially sigma 0 is given by w 0 times sigma 0 double dash minus sigma 0 dash divided by w f y f double dash minus y f dash ok. If you now substitute all these things here, what you will get is that you t f tilde uh, oh by the way the t f uh, t f tilde is given by C P T divided by Y F 0 Q C ok. And if you substitute all these things into here all these things goes if you substitute here. So, essentially what we have done is that we have substituted X F tilde equation in the T tilde equation right and then all these normalization this uh, this weighting functions if you substitute back here what you get is essentially um, C P by y f 0 q c t f minus t 0 divided by y f zero this is actually equal to one but anyways plus sigma 0 divided by y 0 L times T f minus T 0 is equal to 1. You can just do the normalization in this ok. So, now of course, these two cancels ok and this is Q c. If we now we can write this as and this implies T f minus T 0 plus sigma 0 times y f 0 by y 0 L times T f sorry this is this is T L tilde is equal to Q C Y F by C P ok. This is what you get 
Okay, let me just put it here itself. So this gives you the flame temperature that is what is the temperature at xf that is T at xf is equal to Tf and that is given by this equation. Okay? That is the temperature at xf is given by Tf minus T0 plus sigma 0 times Yf0 divided by Yol times Tf minus Tl plus Qc Yf by Cp. All right? Now, what does this mean? What does this significance? Now, to understand the significance on the right hand side, you see what you have. On the right hand side, you have QC that is a chemical heat release okay, and which is given by this times Yf. That is, it is the heat release that is you get by burning Yf kg of fuel. All right. Now, what does that do? Where does Yf come from? Yf come from the fact that that in the mixture that you have considered the fuel mixture on the left hand side 1 kg of fuel mix mix is a short form mixture we can write contains yf kg fuel agreed all right so that is where yf come from so basically this amount of heat release you can get by burning is in terms of basically 1 kg of fuel, 1 kg of fuel mixture. So, Q c times Y f is this thing. Okay. So, 1 kg of fuel contains Y f kg of 1 kg of fuel mix consider the word fuel mixture contains Y f kg of fuel. Now, similarly for stoichiometric burning what do you need for stoich burn W f times nu f double dash minus nu f dash kg fuel needs w 0 times nu 0 double dash minus nu 0 dash kg oxidizer. Okay. All right. Now, so for stoichiometric burning, this amount of kg of fuel, pure fuel needs this kg of oxidizer. Okay? Then it means that 1 kg of fuel needs W0 times nu0 double dash minus nu0 dash divided by Wf times nu f double dash minus nu f dashed kg oxidizer okay and if we just replace this with yf then this needs yf kg of oxidizer okay now what is this this is nothing but yf sigma 0 where sigma 0 is nothing but this okay So, now Yf kg of fuel was contained in 1 kg of fuel mixture. Therefore, 1 kg of fuel mix needs Yf times sigma 0 kg oxidizer. All right. Now, Y0 kg oxidizer you get in 1 kg of oxidizer mixture right because on the right hand side you have basically y0 is the fuel mass fraction of the oxidizer okay so this amount of oxidizer y 0 times 
वाई एफ टाइम सिग्मा जीरो के जी ऑक्सीडाइजर विच इज नीडेड फॉर स्टोशोमेट्रिक बर्निंग ओके इन सिग्मा जीरो वाई एफ बाई वाई जीरो के जी ऑफ ऑक्सीडाइजर मिक्स सो वॉट यू गेट इज दैट फॉर स्टोशोमेट्रिक बर्निंग वन के जी ऑफ फ्यूएल मिक्स नीड्स सिग्मा जीरो टाइम्स वाई एफ बाई वाई जीरो के जी ऑफ ऑक्सीडाइजर मिक्सचर ओके दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड सो जस्ट प्लीज गो ओवर दिस वॉन्स अगेन दैट इज वॉट वी हैव डन इज दैट वन के जी ऑफ फ्यूएल मिक्सचर कंटेन्स वाई एफ के जी ऑफ फ्यूएल ऑल राइट ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ना फॉर स्टोशोमेट्रिक बर्निंग डब्ल्यू एफ टाइम्स दिस के जी ऑफ फ्यूएल नीड्स दिस के जी ऑफ ऑक्सीडाइजर therefore yf yf kg of fuel needs this kg of oxidizer which is nothing but sigma yf times sigma times now you find y0 kg of oxidizer considering the right hand side now y0 times sigma y0 kg of oxidizer in 1 kg of oxidizer mixture therefore this amount of where will you find this amount of oxidizer mixture you will find yf times sigma 0 kg of oxidizer mixture in sigma 0 times yf by y0 kg of oxidizer mixture all right so for stoichiometric burning 1 kg of fuel air mixture essentially needs sigma 0 times yf by y0 kg of oxidizer mixture okay because on the left hand side and the right hand side both contains inerts that is the whole point okay so for stoichiometric burning 1 kg of fuel mixture contains sigma 0 times yf by y0 kg of oxidizer mixture now going back into this what is this doing this is consider in per kg of fuel mixture so if you have 1 kg of fuel mixture this is the amount of heat is being released okay which is the standard heat release in 1 kg of mixture uc times yf and that is heat doing what that is heating up 1 kg of the fuel mixture from t0 to tf okay and it is also heating up exactly the amount that is required for stoichiometric burning exactly the amount of oxidizer that is oxidizer mixture that is heating required for stoichiometric burning so this heat release it's doing the job of heating up 1 kg of fuel mixture fuel mixture and this is also heating up the exact amount of oxidizer mixture for stoichiometric burning okay so then what is the flame temperature exact then then at the then it says that at the flame what is happening is stoichiometric burning is happening because at the flame your temperature is raised from t0 to tf and tl to tf and the, this amount of heat is is released is heating up 1 kg of fuel air mixture or not 1 kg of fuel air mixture 1 kg of fuel and inert mixture okay 1 kg of fuel mixture and the exact amount of oxidizer mixture which is required for stoichiometric burning so the burning that is happening in the flame is essentially stoichiometric burning and the flame temperature corresponding flame temperature is essentially the adiabatic flame temperature all right so this proves that the flame temperature in a non premix flame is essentially the adiabatic flame temperature okay and this is the one of the most important hallmarks of the of the of a non premix flame that the temperature unless there is strong reactant leakage okay that is uh, you your the flame temperature is strongly the is exactly the adiabatic flame temperature you have no control over it because the mixing at the flame is always at the stoichiometric is at a stoichiometric proportions as uh, then the flame itself stabilizes at a location where your it's exactly uh, the fuel air mixture is at a stoichiometric uh, proportion okay uh, so the temperature the mixing is uh, the burning is stoichiometric and the the temperature the such the thus reached is also the adiabatic flame temperature so that the, you cannot control the temperature and because you cannot control the temperature you cannot control the emissions and uh, also you have soot and uh, 
um, and a lot of knocks uh, because the temperature can be so high. So this is one thing, uh, one very important uh, thing about a, about a non-premix frame that the temperature reached is always the adiabatic flame temperature and you can clearly show that just find it from this equation that uh, uh, the, the flame temperature reached is the uh, why the flame temperature is, is the adiabatic flame temperature. But I suggest you go through the book also and you go through uh, this uh, derivation once again to convince yourself that this is the case alright. So that is uh, for this class and we will meet uh, again uh, to discuss the, the, uh, uh, the Stefan flow that is uh, uh, liquid evaporation and then droplet evaporation and condensation. So, thank you.